It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. Welcome to another episode with Supreme Decisions and today I actually want to talk about something um, because I've been dealing with a couple of cases in the last few days that deal with something that kind of makes it a little difficult for you to get a real good grasp of what something is because you don't understand the depths of it and just like I told you before I'm giving you bits and pieces to kind of move you into a realm so you'll have a full arsenal and be actually prepared to fight something but today's episode i'm going to deal with um due process what it is and just give you the constructs of it i'm going to give you a couple of cases that you can actually go back and read through if you like but i hope it gives you the beginning of a grasp of due process because just like i said everything that you do in law has a process it has a method it has something that cannot be circumvented and attempting to circumvent it will kind of get you run into something that you probably don't want or can't deal with properly because what i'm showing you is something that you can use each and every time to win the war you will lose some battles but you will win the war and that's the constructs if you hold true to basically the plan but understanding due process due process requires that when governmental agencies that adjudicate or make binding determinations which directly affect legal rights of individuals they use procedures which have traditionally been associated with judicial process and there are several um, cases that deal with this but for the most part is Amos treat and company versus Security and Exchange Commission. It's a 1962 case. And the biggest part of it is the due process clause is part of the Constitution, as well as determining what the procedures are, again, for, for a fair trial, which means the judicial process. Because there was a time everyone had the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Now, the confines, which again, we're going to a state where it's going to escalate to the point of you are immediately guilty because that's where the programming has led us to. You are immediately guilty until you're proven innocent and then that innocence is accepted. Say that one more time. You're guilty until proven innocence and then your innocence is accepted. Because you have a lot of times people believe, oh, you've been arrested, so you had to have done something wrong. Why not just obey the police? When the construct of that is, why aren't the police doing their jobs and following lawful procedures? No one wants to question the police on their antics because they are not following law. Their tactics are designed to elicit revenue. They're designed to coerce and intimidate. No one finds that unlawful or something that sh should be held against them. But those are things that violate the due process of law. And we've seen a hundred times in Baltimore and in New York where, <laughs> hell, across the country, but it's more prevalent in Philly, Baltimore, New York, because there has actually been news stories that illustrate the firing of police officers for doing this. And it's Whitlock v. Bergman, 
and it's a 2012 case. We have consistently held that police officers who manufacture false evidence against a criminal defendant violates due process if that evidence is later used to deprive the defendant of his or her liberty in some way. If you are taken from a crime scene or you're taken from a scene such as a traffic stop and then taken to jail to be fingerprinted, that is a violation of due process. Because again, even fingerprints require the same exact scrutiny for the Fourth Amendment just as your ID does. And those cases I'm gonna put up on the screen just so you can see them. Not gonna go through them because there'll be a time and place for that as well. But these are things that we know are being implemented in places such as California. I've even heard it being used in El Paso. Those things I know are being used in um, Florida. I know they're being used in New York because it's an intimidation tactic and it's about revenue has very little to do with law because as you can see from the cases that I put up on just those instances, they are violations of the law. But no one wants to change the ideals that a police officer is not a good person, that a police officer is not an honest person, that these people are actually out here doing their job properly when in fact 99.9% .9 of them are not trained properly. And nobody's questioning the training. Nobody's questioning the tactics. This is why whenever I speak about attacking every inst of their procedures, that's how you win. Because they're used to doing wrong so much that they think it is right. They're trained that it's right. When in fact, law dictates that their procedures and training are wrong. Understanding this, and I'm gonna give you, give you something else, and then I'm gonna close on due process for today. Because most people have very little idea that even something as simple as the right to counsel, because you often hear them in Miranda v. Arizona when they're re reading your, your Miranda rights, which many have stopped doing before, prior to an arrest, is telling you have the right to an attorney, and I told you that was wrong. Because the words attorney do not appear in the Constitution as a right. Because an attorney is a bar court member. But however, the Sixth Amendment right to counsel, the counsel of your choosing, if that is taken away from you, because you want to use someone that is learned in law to represent your interests, to be your mouthpiece, there are procedures for that. But at the same time, you want to make sure you understand the constructs of it and the significance of it and the things that you have to give up in writing in order for them to apply and understand the liability that comes with that. The Sixth Amendment right to counsel is a fundamental right applied to the states via the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution and the Due Process Clause requires criminal defendants to be provided with counsel at trial. Because again, you have the right to be heard through your own counsel, even if unqualified. And unqualified simply means unrestricted. You do not have to have a bar card carrying member to do your representation. However, you do have to understand the consequences of not having a bar card member representing you because you are assuming the, the consequences of you. So remember, everything that deals with due process deals with judicial process. If any point in the judicial process is violated, which again starts with the encounter, if it does that, then you have a right to be redressed in federal court. Then you have the right to a new trial. Then you have the right to a new hearing. Then you have the right for removal. Those are the things that I have for you right now. I want to give a big shout out to Robin. She's sponsoring this episode and we're going to keep going, keep growing. Remember, we still have the donation links in the, in the description. Use them. Let's keep this, hell, let's keep this growing because I'm also going to include today some of the new equipment that we have because I spoke about the, the Note 10. 
that has been showing some beautiful pictures. I'm also going to show you our new tripod. So be on the lookout for it because again, everything that you send in to me goes towards building the channel, making, we're going to make this channel great, period. Damn, making it great again. We're going to keep it great and we're going to keep it growing and keep it going. So until next time.